What is going on? My reefing fan, March here. This is Fragbox TV. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new, hello. We are recording here from Toronto, Ontario. People always say, oh my God, I can't believe you're in Canada. What? There's a store here like you guys and I can order from you? Yes, you can. Man, the corals in these beds right now looking really good. Why do I say right now looking really good? Because we go through ups and downs here in the shop. Like every reef tank that's out there, um, like every hobbyist. And I like to show you guys on this channel the good and the bad. Because I feel like the good is too easy. I can just show off um, our acro when they're looking really nice. Like, hmm, let's find an example. Maybe this one here or this one here. Man, our colors are on point. Okay, I'm gonna show you something not so hot in a second. Why are our acros looking so good right now? I'm getting color that I'm really, really impressed with. What the f are you doing in there? Emerald crab, look at this. That's unusual. Usually we don't find emeralds hanging out in acros like that. I'm just gonna pull them out. One second. A little bugger, we got him out. We'll hang out on another coral. Um, what I was saying before the crab sidetracked me, the colors on our acro are looking really good. And we're doing something new in the store. So every week what I do is I send off a ICP test from a company. I finally found one. Maybe you saw the video that I did. I was really upset with a couple other ones out there. I'm not gonna mention them. Actually, maybe I should mention them. One was called ICP analysis and the other one was called um, Triton. I'm sorry, they both stunk. I didn't get results. Anyways, every week I'm sending these ones out and I'm fine tuning the dosing of like some of the major and minor trace elements in here. So I've started adding potassium and iodine, nickel, copper, um, and different trace elements. So I think that is why I'm getting really, really good color. Okay. So that's the good. Let me show you now the bad. This is almost done scaping. Actually, how do we feel about it? Hmm? Hmm? One island, very different than what I normally do. I have a Florida Recordia over here. And this is what we call bleached. I don't know why I'm singing it. It's not a good thing. So typically we want to see, like most corals have a very saturated and consistent color throughout the body. So for Recordia, let's say this yellow one, if we focus on him or this green one, or this blue one, you see how it's all consistent, but here we have a little bit of bleaching going on. You know what, now that I notice, maybe this one a little bit too, right there. See this mushroom? That's what we wanna see. Straight green, same, same color throughout. Man, the soft corals in this tank, huh, look how good they're doing. This is a little six gallon tank. I'll link in the description if you're interested in getting one. I think it is my favorite tank right now in the store. Um, I'm just obsessed with nano reef tanks. It's kind of what got me into the hobby to begin with. So why is it bleaching? That I don't actually have the answer for. I think it may have been salinity. So we had a sw small swing here in this tank. The salinity went to 1.022, which usually I wouldn't expect to see bleaching on a easy to keep coral like this, a Florida Recordia. It's a type of mushroom or soft coral. and only him, which is also strange. I would expect to see some sort of negative reactions or repercussions, you know, with maybe this leather, um, some anthelia or xenia or one of these. Everything else more or less perfect, but I'm noticing some bleaching here. So I wanna try and fix it. What do we do to fix bleach corals? Now bleaching, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, what is this? Come on, March is OCD, if you haven't noticed. Nothing is allowed on top of there, sorry. Okay, so. Now that we got that on the way. This, I just noticed over here, a little bit of tissue recession on this one piece. That is not bleaching. When we're talking about hard coral, Acropora, this looks like a milli here. This is not bleaching. This is tissue recession. So what I typically like to do is put a coral in low light. So what I've done is um, turn down the lights on that tank. And sometimes a little bit of spot feeding can also help. Did I just see what I think I saw? One sec, come back with me. Oh yeah, we got another one. Look at this, branching. Alveopora, quite rare. So it's like your alvey, but check this out. Da, da, da. It branches almost like a hammer or torch coral. Isn't that neat? Usually gonies and alveys, they're gonna grow in a very round shape, like uh, like a dome. Like this here, let me show you this one. This is a red gonie. See how he's growing like in a, in a ball shape or even this one here, sorry. I'm supposed to be talking about bleaching corals, but I'm getting distracted, look. So it's strange that that one is branching. Speaking about alvies, oh man, Tia's tank is on fire. So low light can help, 
and also a little bit of spot feeding. So that's what I'm gonna do right now with this Recordia. And then I'm gonna continue to do that maybe for a couple weeks and hopefully it will improve and I can pick up the camera again and I can show you what it will look like. Oh, the feather duster came out to play, hello. I'm going to use these here. If you can get access to any of them, all great. I think these specifically say do not spot feed. Um, I like this one. I'm going to spot feed it even though it says it doesn't. Um, they did change the formula recipe just because it sinks. So this is like a good all around food. But what I do is I'm going to take this and I'm actually going to mix it with some of this. I wish you could smell this stuff. This is the stinkiest, most potent mixture of high quality coral food. Oh, the smell, like when I open this, the store smells like the ocean. This is some powerful stuff if you can find. Actually, what am I saying? You can grab it on our site, reefcasa.com, and it ships internationally. Thank you again to our friends Fauna. Specially, special food for Recordia, Zoanthids, and Goniopora. And we are dealing here with Recordia. Now this is super concentrated. That's m way too much for um, this little tank here but I'm gonna use it on some of the other frags too. So that's the Min S, and here's some of the coral dust. Mix her together with a tiny bit of salt water. Now this trick will work for quite a few corals. I got the idea from the video because someone asked me how to help a dying open brain coral, which is this type of coral here. It also works well for acans. Um, Tia uses a similar recipe at home. She is like the queen. If you don't know who Tia is, she's the manager here at the store. She is the queen of saving dying corals. Like she, if something here isn't doing super well or it's on its last limb or she, um, here, I'll show you. Like a blasto like this, I don't know how she does it. I mean, I do know how she does it, the spot feeding and just giving it tender loving care, but she can bring back corals from near extinction. It's like one of her specialties. Even hard ones. This is not a hard one to save though. I do expect it to recover and that's sort of why I'm doing the video. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the flow. Oh, you wanna see what we're running underneath? Nothing. We have a large um, gallon, five gallon thing of fresh water here, running a Duetto ATO here in the back behind our nice sexy filtration cover for auto top off, a heater, and that's it. We're not even running floss or carbon right now. This is like the simplest setup in the store. Less is more when it comes to these small tanks. We don't have any fish in it right now either. So I believe it's this one. We'll kill the flow. Ooh, there we go. We'll take some of our slurry paste that we've made here. <laughs> and it's actually a lot of fun to feed corals. You know what? I think this is a part of the hobby. You don't have to wait until something is bleached in order to feed it. The, uh, you know, corals all have mouths. So if we're looking at these ricks here, every one of those little green things, those are mouths. Ah, Mr. Hermit Crab, get out of here. I'm not trying to feed, okay, take some and leave. Go, here, have some, some steak. So corals have mouths. They eat a tremendous amount of food in the ocean. Mouths are for eating and I think coral nutrition is something that definitely gets you can see I'm feeding all of them now not just that one but coral nutrition is something that definitely gets um, left on the table and that we're probably not feeding enough just compared to how much they're getting in the ocean I didn't realize I had so many hermits in here damn here you want some oh sorry I guess that's why it's so clean so you can see here after only maybe 60 seconds of listening to me blah 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 it's starting to eat it all and don't really worry about overfeeding if you give it too much it'll just spit some of it out but just enough to cover it. Man, there are a lot of hermits. Look at these, hi, you want some? And you can see in the back, the Nasarius snails have come out. They now smell it. Um, these don't really, you know, they do have polyps. I guess they're probably going to eat some of it, but this isn't typically a coral that you spot feed. Um, soft corals, uh, Anthelias or Xenias or Daisies or Kenyas. We don't usually spot feed these in the hobby. Uh, maybe this one up here, can try. I think I'm just pissing it off more than anything. Um, when you're adding food like this, you are, in a sense, adding, you know, nutrients, so nitrates and phosphates. So I'm doing this before we do our water changes uh, on Monday, which is going to be tomorrow. So even if the nutrients are a little bit higher, man, they're really going to town on that food. Okay, here, share, don't fight. It's, it's going to be okay because it's getting a large water change um, tomorrow anyways. Okay, we don't get enough shots here with the macro lens, so I'm just going to bust it out. Even though it's a little hard to use, you can get really up close and personal and see how... Um, kind of like almost turn their stomachs inside out to eat it. So like I said, this trick works for a lot of corals. You don't have to wait until they're bleached. I would recommend feeding maybe once or twice a week. It can take about a month um, to bring back bleached corals. When we bring in acros from overseas, they almost always show up bleached, especially from Australia. They come in like really, really light in color. 
but I expect this thing to make a full recovery. Still not 100% why it drops some of the zoanthellae. So I guess I should have explained in the beginning what bleaching is. The coral has this symbiotic relationship with this zoanthellae um, bacteria that basically photosynth photosynthesizes and makes food. And you guys are just, you're the craziest hermits I've ever seen. Look at them, nom 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 nom. I'll pick up the camera in, when I see it improve, let's say about a month, and we'll do another one of these videos, and we'll do a part two, and I'll show you how coral feed can sometimes save and help a uh, coral when it's bleached. And that's it for today's video. If you guys like the content and you want to learn more about corals and everything to do with reef related aquariums, then subscribe. Hit the little bell in the bottom and get notified when we do another video like this. And that's it. I'll let you go. And thank you very much for watching this episode of Fragbox TV. Bye for now.